i must make you one confession ivan began i could never understand how one can love one's neighbors it's just one's neighbors to my mind that one can't love though one might love those at a distance i once read somewhere of john the merciful a saint that when a hungry frozen beggar came to him he took him into his bed held him in his arms and began breathing into his mouth which was putrid and loathsome from some awful disease i am convinced that he did that from self-laceration from the self-laceration of falsity for the sake of the charity imposed by duty as a penance laid on him for any one to love a man he must be hidden for as soon as he shows his face love is gone father zassima has talked of that more than once observed alyosha he too said that the face of a man often hinders many people not practised in love from loving him but yet there's a great deal of love in mankind and almost christ-like love i know that myself ivan well i know nothing of it so far and can't understand it and the innumerable mass of mankind are with me there the question is whether that's due to men's bad qualities or whether it's inherent in their nature to my thinking christ-like love for men is a miracle impossible on earth he was god but we are not gods suppose i for instance suffer intensely another can never know how much i suffer because he is another and not i and what's more a man is rarely ready to admit another's suffering as though it were a distinction why won't he admit it do you think because i smell unpleasant because i have a stupid face because i once trod on his foot besides there is suffering and suffering degrading humiliating suffering such as humbles me hunger for instance my benefactor will perhaps allow me but when you come to higher suffering for an idea for instance he will very rarely admit that perhaps because my face strikes him as not at all what he fancies a man should have who suffers for an idea and so he deprives me instantly of his favor and not at all from badness of heart beggars especially genteel beggars ought never to show themselves but to ask for charity through the newspapers one can love one's neighbors in the abstract or even at a distance but at close quarters it's almost impossible if it were as on the stage in the ballet where if beggars come in they wear silken rags and tattered lace and beg for alms dancing gracefully then one might like looking at them but even then we should not love them but enough of that i simply wanted to show you my point of view i meant to speak of the suffering of mankind generally but we had better confine ourselves to the sufferings of the children that reduces the scope of my argument to a tenth of what it would be still we'd better keep to the children though it does weaken my case but in the first place children can be loved even at close quarters even when they are dirty even when they are ugly i fancy though children never are ugly the second reason why i won't speak of grown-up people is that besides being disgusting and unworthy of love they have a compensation they've eaten the apple and know good and evil and they've become like gods they go on eating it still but the children haven't eaten anything and are so far innocent are you fond of children alyosha i know you are and you will understand why i prefer to speak of them if they too suffer horribly on earth they must suffer for their father's sins they must be punished for their fathers who have eaten the apple but that reasoning is of the other world and is incomprehensible for the heart of man here on earth the innocent must not suffer for another's sins and especially such innocence you may be surprised at me alyosha but i am awfully fond of children too and observe cruel people the violent the rapacious the karamazovs are sometimes very fond of children children while they are quite little up to seven for instance are so remote from grown-up people they are different creatures as it were of a different species 
i knew a criminal in prison who had in the course of his career as a burglar murdered whole families including several children but when he was in prison he had a strange affection for them he spent all his time at his window watching the children playing in the prison yard he trained one little boy to come up to his window and made great friends with him you don't know why i am telling you all this alyosha my head aches and i am sad you speak with a strange air observed alyosha uneasily as though you were not quite yourself by the way a bulgarian i met lately in moscow ivan went on seeming not to hear his brother's words told me about the crimes committed by turks and circassians in all parts of bulgaria through fear of a general rising of the slavs they burn villages murder outrage women and children they nail their prisoners by the ears to the fences leave them so till morning and in the morning they hang them all sorts of things you can't imagine people talk sometimes of bestial cruelty but that's a great injustice and insult to the beasts a beast can never be so cruel as a man so artistically cruel the tiger only tears and gnaws that's all he can do he would never think of nailing people by the ears even if he were able to do it these turks took a pleasure in torturing children too cutting the unborn child from the mother's womb and tossing babies up in the air and catching them on the points of their bayonets before their mother's eyes doing it before the mother's eyes was what gave zest to the amusement here is another scene that i thought very interesting imagine a trembling mother with her baby in her arms a circle of invading turks around her they've planned a diversion they pet the baby laugh to make it laugh they succeed the baby laughs at that moment a turk points a pistol four inches from the baby's face the baby laughs with glee holds out its little hands to the pistol and he pulls the trigger in the baby's face and blows out its brains artistic wasn't it by the way turks are particularly fond of sweet things they say brother what are you driving at asked alyosha i think if the devil doesn't exist but man has created him he has created him in his own image and likeness just as he did god then observed alyosha it's wonderful how you can turn words as polonius says in hamlet laughed ivan you turn my words against me well i am glad yours must be a fine god if man created him in his image and likeness you asked just now what i was driving at you see i am fond of collecting certain facts and would you believe i even copy anecdotes of a certain sort from newspapers and books and i've already got a fine collection the turks of course have gone into it but they are foreigners i have specimens from home that are even better than the turks you know we prefer beating rods and scourges that's our national institution nailing ears is unthinkable for us for we are after all europeans but the rod and the scourge we have always with us and they cannot be taken from us abroad now they scarcely do any beating manners are more humane or laws have been passed so that they don't dare to flog men now but they make up for it in another way just as national as ours and so national that it would be practically impossible among us though i believe we are being inoculated with it since the religious movement began in our aristocracy i have a charming pamphlet translated from the french describing how quite recently five years ago a murderer richard was executed a young man i believe of three-and-twenty who repented and was converted to the christian faith at the very scaffold this richard was an illegitimate child who was given as a child of six by his parents to some shepherds on the swiss mountains they brought him up to work for them he grew up like a little wild beast among them the shepherds taught him nothing and scarcely fed or clothed him but sent him out at seven to herd the flock in cold and wet and no one hesitated or scrupled to treat him so 
quite the contrary they thought they had every right for richard had been given to them as a chattel and they did not even see the necessity of feeding him richard himself describes how in those years like the prodigal son in the gospel he longed to eat of the mash given to the pigs which were fattened for sale but they wouldn't give him even that and beat him when he stole from the pigs and that was how he spent all his childhood and his youth till he grew up and was strong enough to go away and be a thief the savage began to earn his living as a day laborer in geneva he drank what he earned he lived like a brute and finished by killing and robbing an old man he was caught tried and condemned to death they are not sentimentalists there and in prison he was immediately surrounded by pastors members of christian brotherhoods philanthropic ladies and the like they taught him to read and write in prison and expounded the gospel to him they exhorted him worked upon him drummed at him incessantly till at last he solemnly confessed his crime he was converted he wrote to the court himself that he was a monster but that in the end god had vouchsafed him light and shown grace all geneva was in excitement about him all philanthropic and religious geneva all the aristocratic and well-bred society of the town rushed to the prison kissed richard and embraced him you are our brother you have found grace and richard does nothing but weep with emotion yes i found grace all my youth and childhood i was glad of pig's food but now even i have found grace i am dying in the lord yes richard die in the lord you have shed blood and must die though it's not your fault that you knew not the lord when you coveted the pig's food and were beaten for stealing it which was very wrong of you for stealing is forbidden but you've shed blood and you must die and on the last day richard perfectly limp did nothing but cry and repeat every minute this is my happiest day i am going to the lord yes cry the pastors and the judges and philanthropic ladies this is the happiest day of your life for you are going to the lord they all walk or drive to the scaffold in procession behind the prison van at the scaffold they call to richard die brother die in the lord for even thou hast found grace and so covered with his brother's kisses richard is dragged on to the scaffold and led to the guillotine and they chopped off his head in brotherly fashion because he had found grace yes that's characteristic that pamphlet is translated into russian by some russian philanthropists of aristocratic rank and evangelical aspirations and has been distributed gratis for the enlightenment of the people the case of richard is interesting because it's national though to us it's absurd to cut off a man's head because he has become our brother and has found grace yet we have our own specialty which is all but worse our historical pastime is the direct satisfaction of inflicting pain there are lines in nekrasov describing how a peasant lashes a horse on the eyes on its meek eyes every one must have seen it it's peculiarly russian he describes how a feeble little nag has foundered under too heavy a load and cannot move the peasant beats it beats it savagely beats it at last not knowing what he is doing in the intoxication of cruelty thrashes it mercilessly over and over again however weak you are you must pull if you die for it the nag strains and then he begins lashing the poor defenceless creature on its weeping on its meek eyes the frantic beast tugs and draws the load trembling all over gasping for breath moving sideways with a sort of unnatural spasmodic action it's awful in nekrasov but that's only a horse and god has given horses to be beaten so the tatars have taught us and they left us the knout as a remembrance of it but men too can be beaten a well-educated cultured gentleman and his wife beat their own child with a birch rod a girl of seven i have an exact account of it the papa was glad that the birch was covered with twigs it stings more said he and so he began stinging his daughter 
i know for a fact there are people who at every blow are worked up to sensuality to literal sensuality which increases progressively at every blow they inflict they beat for a minute for five minutes for ten minutes more often and more savagely the child screams at last the child cannot scream it gasps daddy daddy by some diabolical unseemly chance the case was brought into court a council is engaged the russian people have long called a barrister a conscience for hire the council protests in his client's defence it's such a simple thing he says an everyday domestic event a father corrects his child to our shame be it said it is brought into court the jury convinced by him give a favourable verdict the public roars with delight that the torturer is acquitted ah kitty i wasn't there i would have proposed to raise a subscription in his honour charming pictures but i've still better things about children i've collected a great great deal about russian children alyosha there was a little girl of five who was hated by her father and mother most worthy and respectable people of good education and breeding you see i must repeat again it is a peculiar characteristic of many people this love of torturing children and children only to all other types of humanity these torturers behave mildly and benevolently like cultivated and humane europeans but they are very fond of tormenting children even fond of children themselves in that sense it's just their defencelessness that tempts the tormentor just the angelic confidence of the child who has no refuge and no appeal that sets his vile blood on fire in every man of course a demon lies hidden the demon of rage the demon of lustful heat at the screams of the tortured victim the demon of lawlessness let off the chain the demon of diseases that follow on vice gout kidney disease and so on this poor child of five was subjected to every possible torture by those cultivated parents they beat her thrashed her kicked her for no reason till her body was one bruise then they went to greater refinements of cruelty shut her up all night in the cold and frost in a privy and because she didn't ask to be taken up at night as though a child of five sleeping its angelic sound sleep could be trained to wake and ask they smeared her face and filled her mouth with excrement and it was her mother her mother did this and that mother could sleep hearing the poor child's groans can you understand why a little creature who can't even understand what's done to her should beat her little aching heart with her tiny fist in the dark and the cold and weep her meek unresentful tears to dear kind god to protect her do you understand that friend and brother you pious and humble novice do you understand why this infamy must be and is permitted without it i am told man could not have existed on earth for he could not have known good and evil why should he know that diabolical good and evil when it costs so much why the whole world of knowledge is not worth that child's prayer to dear kind god i say nothing of the sufferings of grown-up people they have eaten the apple damn them and the devil take them all but these little ones i am making you suffer alyosha you are not yourself i'll leave off if you like never mind i want to suffer too muttered alyosha one picture only one more because it's so curious so characteristic and i have only just read it in some collection of russian antiquities i've forgotten the name i must look it up it was in the darkest days of serfdom at the beginning of the century and long lived the liberator of the people there was in those days a general of aristocratic connections the owner of great estates one of those men somewhat exceptional i believe even then who retiring from the service into a life of leisure are convinced that they've earned absolute power over the lives of their subjects there were such men then 
so our general settled on his property of two thousand souls lives in pomp and domineers over his poor neighbors as though they were dependents and buffoons he has kennels of hundreds of hounds and nearly a hundred dog boys all mounted and in uniform one day a serf boy a little child of eight threw a stone in play and hurt the paw of the general's favorite hound why is my favorite dog lame he is told that the boy threw a stone that hurt the dog's paw so you did it the general looked the child up and down take him he was taken taken from his mother and kept shut up all night early that morning the general comes out on horseback with the hounds his dependents dog boys and huntsmen all mounted around him in full hunting parade the servants are summoned for their edification and in front of them all stands the mother of the child the child is brought from the lock-up it's a gloomy cold foggy autumn day a capital day for hunting the general orders the child to be undressed the child is stripped naked he shivers numb with terror not daring to cry make him run commands the general run run shout the dog boys the boy runs at him yells the general and he sets the whole pack of hounds on the child the hounds catch him and tear him to pieces before his mother's eyes i believe the general was afterwards declared incapable of administering his estates well what did he deserve to be shot to be shot for the satisfaction of our moral feelings speak alyosha to be shot murmured alyosha lifting his eyes to ivan with a pale twisted smile bravo cried ivan delighted if even you say so you're a pretty monk so there is a little devil sitting in your heart alyosha kalamazov what i said was absurd but that's just the point that but cried ivan let me tell you novice that the absurd is only too necessary on earth the world stands on absurdities and perhaps nothing would have come to pass in it without them we know what we know what do you know i understand nothing ivan went on as though in delirium i don't want to understand anything now i want to stick to the fact i made up my mind long ago not to understand if i try to understand anything i shall be false to the fact and i have determined to stick to the fact why are you trying me alyosha cried with sudden distress will you say what you mean at last of course i will that's what i've been leading up to you are dear to me i don't want to let you go and i won't give you up to your zasima ivan for a minute was silent his face became all at once very sad listen i took the case of children only to make my case clearer of the other tears of humanity with which the earth is soaked from its crust to its centre i will say nothing i have narrowed my subject on purpose i am a bug and i recognize in all humility that i cannot understand why the world is arranged as it is men are themselves to blame i suppose they were given paradise they wanted freedom and stole fire from heaven though they knew they would become unhappy so there is no need to pity them with my pitiful earthly euclidean understanding all i know is that there is suffering and that there are none guilty that cause follows effect simply and directly that everything flows and finds its level but that's only euclidean nonsense i know that and i can't consent to live by it what comfort is it to me that there are none guilty and that cause follows effect simply and directly and that i know it i must have justice or i will destroy myself and not justice in some remote infinite time and space but here on earth and that i could see myself i have believed in it i want to see it and if i am dead by then let me rise again for if it all happens without me it will be too unfair 
surely i haven't suffered simply that i my crimes and my sufferings may manure the soil of the future harmony for somebody else i want to see with my own eyes the hind lie down with the lion and the victim rise up and embrace his murderer i want to be there when every one suddenly understands what it has all been for all the religions of the world are built on this longing and i am a believer but then there are the children and what am i to do about them that's a question i can't answer for the hundredth time i repeat there are numbers of questions but i've only taken the children because in their case what i mean is so unanswerably clear listen if all must suffer to pay for the eternal harmony what have children to do with it tell me please it's beyond all comprehension why they should suffer and why they should pay for the harmony why should they too furnish material to enrich the soil for the harmony of the future i understand solidarity in sin among men i understand solidarity in retribution too but there can be no such solidarity with children and if it is really true that they must share responsibility for all their father's crimes such a truth is not of this world and is beyond my comprehension some jester will say perhaps that the child would have grown up and have sinned but you see he didn't grow up he was torn to pieces by the dogs at eight years old oh alyosha i am not blaspheming i understand of course what an upheaval of the universe it will be when everything in heaven and earth blends in one hymn of praise and everything that lives and has lived cries aloud thou art just o lord for thy ways are revealed when the mother embraces the fiend who threw her child to the dogs and all three cry aloud with tears thou art just o lord then of course the crown of knowledge will be reached and all will be made clear but what pulls me up here is that i can't accept that harmony and while i am on earth i make haste to take my own measures you see alyosha perhaps it really may happen that if i live to that moment or rise again to see it i too perhaps may cry aloud with the rest looking at the mother embracing the child's torturer thou art just o lord but i don't want to cry aloud then while there is still time i hasten to protect myself and so i renounce the higher harmony altogether it's not worth the tears of that one tortured child who beat itself on the breast with its little fist and prayed in its stinking outhouse with its unexpiated tears to dear kind god it's not worth it because those tears are unatoned for they must be atoned for or there can be no harmony but how how are you going to atone for them is it possible by their being avenged but what do i care for avenging them what do i care for a hell for oppressors what good can hell do since those children have already been tortured and what becomes of harmony if there is hell i want to forgive i want to embrace i don't want more suffering and if the sufferings of children go to swell the sum of sufferings which was necessary to pay for truth then i protest that the truth is not worth such a price i don't want the mother to embrace the oppressor who threw her son to the dogs she dare not forgive him let her forgive him for herself if she will let her forgive the torturer for the immeasurable suffering of her mother's heart but the sufferings of her tortured child she has no right to forgive she dare not forgive the torturer even if the child were to forgive him and if that is so if they dare not forgive what becomes of harmony is there in the world a being who would have the right to forgive and could forgive i don't want harmony from love for humanity i don't want it i would rather be left with the unavenged suffering 
i would rather remain with my unavenged suffering and unsatisfied indignation even if i were wrong besides too high a price is asked for harmony it's beyond our means to pay so much to enter on it and so i hasten to give back my entrance ticket and if i am an honest man i am bound to give it back as soon as possible and that i am doing it's not god that i don't accept alyosha only i most respectfully return him the ticket that's rebellion murmured alyosha looking down rebellion i am sorry you call it that said ivan earnestly one can hardly live in rebellion and i want to live tell me yourself i challenge you answer imagine that you are creating a fabric of human destiny with the object of making men happy in the end giving them peace and rest at last but that it was essential and inevitable to torture to death only one tiny creature that baby beating its breast with its fist for instance and to found that edifice on its unavenged tears would you consent to be the architect on those conditions tell me and tell the truth no i wouldn't consent said alyosha softly and can you admit the idea that men for whom you are building it would agree to accept their happiness on the foundation of the unexpiated blood of a little victim and accepting it would remain happy for ever no i can't admit it brother said alyosha suddenly with flashing eyes you said just now is there a being in the whole world who would have the right to forgive and could forgive but there is a being and he can forgive everything all and for all because he gave his innocent blood for all and everything you have forgotten him and on him is built the edifice and it is to him they cry aloud thou art just o lord for thy ways are revealed ah the one without sin and his blood no i have not forgotten him on the contrary i have been wondering all the time how it was you did not bring him in before for usually all arguments on your side put him in the foreground do you know alyosha don't laugh i made a poem about a year ago if you can waste another ten minutes on me i'll tell it to you you wrote a poem oh no i didn't write it laughed ivan and i've never written two lines of poetry in my life but i made up this poem in prose and i remembered it i was carried away when i made it up you will be my first reader that is listener why should an author forego even one listener smiled ivan shall i tell it to you i am all attention said alyosha my poem is called the grand inquisitor it's a ridiculous thing but i want to tell it to you 